All right, guys, Easy Amateur Radio here, back with the untested KX3 transceiver I bought off of eBay. Uh, if you're interested in this video, if you're interested in learning more about amateur radio and CB radio, make sure to like and subscribe. I don't usually say that in the videos, but I do want to put a reminder out there that when you like and subscribe, you're supporting this channel and you're also not spending any money. Uh, subscriptions are free, so make sure that you do that. So now jumping into the Elecraft KX3. This is a wonderful radio, Cadillac of radios. I forgot just how much I enjoyed operating this radio. I'm still waiting on the microphone to come in. So we don't know about sideband. We don't know what works. But today we're going to get this radio on FT8 and digital modes. So today... Oh, I messed the power cable up. Oh no. My power. It's broken. Boom, sorry, bump the power cable. The fuses are a little bit squirrely, to say the least. But this, the interface we're gonna be talking about today is the DigiRig Mobile. It's kind of the go-to. Now you wanna make sure you get the right one configured for the Elecraft. I believe it's an R232 board. Now what I did is I went to Gigaparts and I put the link in the description and bought the Elecraft KX3 kit. It, it came with, I'll tell you once we get the radio powered back on. There we go. We want to see that beautiful screen. Uh, so it came with this uh, USB-C cable. It came with that. It came with the DigiRig and the, the KX3 connectors. Uh, now, I will say that this is about $100, so whatever you purchase your KX3 for, total it up to that so the way the connectors go on the side you can see this is the side of the kx3 you want to put the green connector in the headphone jack the red connector in the mic jack and this in the accessory jack and then the top one is the power cable and you want to make sure the right cables are going to the right digi rig so this is going to be for our sound. So we want to make sure it goes in the audio port. And then serial is the accessory. And that's what we want. And now let's go through some menu items on the KX3 and talk about what you need to set for digital modes. Now, there are a few different things you can do. So we'll go down here to display. We'll start with this. We'll come back here. We don't need alarm or anything like that. So let's see, you want your AGC mode uh, either in fast or off. You want, here see, but mine is off right now. We want to go back to AF limit. You want to set that to somewhere around 20, 15 or 20. I think it comes 30 stock. And then we'll scroll Uh, the next thing we're going to get to is going to be, it should be the ball up mic bias. I left mine on. Some people say you need it off. I don't know if it really matters or not. Mine is on. I know that's one on there. And then we want to keep going. That's preamp. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn our preamp off. That's what you want to do. Here's your baud rate, RS232. And down there at the bottom, that's set, uh, the 38400 is what you want your baud rate to be. Nothing for there. We're going to keep scrolling. There's my serial number for this random KX3 that I bought off of eBay. Uh, that's just what I keep my tune power at. Uh, 1.5 watts, half a watt, you know, depending on what's going on. There should be a few more settings. Nope, that's about it as far as this, but now let's go to the most important setting is your data. So you wanna to touch the data mode on the KX3 and we want it in data A mode. Now, you can see that there are different modes. FSK, PSK, we want data A. 
data A. You can see it right there. Sorry, the VSPO knob's kind of in the way. Press data again. Boom. Now we're set up for digital modes on here. We'll go through. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Your filter is something you're going to want to play with. So you want your uh, frequency center at 1.5 or filter center, but you want to take your bandwidth and bring it on up. I like to bring my bandwidth to 350, but some people prefer theirs all the way open at four. Whatever you prefer, I like 350, that's my go-to. Now let's head to the shack inside on the big antenna. We're gonna see what we can do with three watts and getting this radio on to FT8 on a Windows machine and a Mac machine. Thanks for watching guys, Easy Amateur Radio 73. Okay, so now we have WSJTX running with the Elecraft KX3 on this Mac laptop. Again, with the DigiRig, nothing has changed, just a different operating system. So we'll go up here to WSJTX, we'll check out preferences. Uh, audio is going to be USB audio device, same thing, DigiRig, Elecraft KX3. Uh, we're going to jump down here, KX3. Um, this is going to be tty.slab USB to UART 38400. Uh, I have this one with 8 and 2 stop bits and and 8 data bits. Uh, default handshake is none. I kept getting this error where it would uh, basically um, key the radio up at the same time when you're testing CAT. And then up top, PTT method, I used RST, and this is uh, the same, I guess you'd call it COM port, serial port, as your control serial port. A data packet mode and split operation is none. Everything works. You can see that we are making some contacts here, and we'll jump over to grid tracker. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see these little orange lines. We're getting out into Europe, and that's only on three watts. So you can do pretty good on three watts. It's not uh, just not making the contacts today for the video, but that's not what this is about. This is about getting the Elecraft KX3 onto WSJTX. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really hope this helps somebody get their KX3 on the air. All right, so what we're looking at here is WSJTX with the Elecraft KX3. Now this is a little bit challenging to get on. It's kind of hard to find good documentation. So that is why I am making this video right here. So the WSJTX settings, now this is with the DigiRig uh, digital interface. So I have my serial port selected. Uh, the baud rate matches the radio at 38400. All of this is set to default. Default data bits, default stop bits, default handshake. PTT method is cat. Uh, mode is data packet. And split operation is none. Everything is working like it should. Audio is going to be the USB audio device that coordinates with this. You can see that we are getting out. Uh, we are decoding stations. We do have a waterfall. Apologies, my usual setup is not this janky, but I am, uh, my main tripod is MIA uh, right now. And then right here, we have our spots, and you can see at 3 watts on the sky loop, we are getting out. We're getting into Europe, South America. I've been running this for about 10 minutes. So uh, I'll take that all day long. I will take that all day long. Now let's look at the, we're going to look at the Mac and see what it is to get the Elecraft working on Mac products.